her children about God. Proverbs 31 and 28. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. She nurtures them with the love of Christ. She disciplines them with care and wisdom and trains them up in the way they should go. As parents, that is our job to teach our children about God and life. Yeah. They may go astray, uh -huh. but that's our job. Come on, say that's our job. Our job. It's my job, pastor job. Our job to teach our children. Yeah. It's not up to the school system to teach our children. They have 25 to 30 kids in the classroom. They don't have time to necessarily focus on your little boo-boo. Right. Now if your little boo-boo that special, then you need to homeschool your little boo-boo. <laughs> if he don't know how to get in with the flow of the, of the, of the crowd, then you need to homeschool that boo-boo. Yes. I'm for real because that's how a lot of kids are getting left behind that's because right. they can't adapt. Right. And then they get it, have to go to a special ed class. Don't have no social skills. And that's a very important skill to have because we as parents didn't teach our kids that how to be social. And then they get labeled. Once they get labeled in kindergarten, they gonna follow that through our high school. And that's, it takes God, prayer, and everything else to get that changed. So a lot of our kids are having a rough start because we have sorry, lazy parents. Can the teachers say, whoo? We have sorry, lazy parents. Won't even get up and make sure your child gets to school. Won't even make sure that your children got on clean clothes. Won't even make sure your children taking a dog on bath. That's sorry, lazy, and what? Trifle. And they ain't nowhere near no virtuous one. At all. You laid down and had no babies, you and your husband, your boyfriend, or whoever, but the mama, you better make sure you get in there and see about those children. That's right. Amen. That's your job. You take it on as your job. Yes. Now, if things happen where both of y'all have to do it, that's fine. The way things are going now, we have to. But I guarantee you, Mother Bruce take more initiative in the boys than the apostle does. I can almost guarantee that. That's the way it is. I can almost guarantee that. Not saying he don't love his boys. That ain't saying that. But she gonna make sure they eat. She gonna make sure they got clothes. She gonna make sure they look good. She gonna make sure they hair cut. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, please make sure these children got Woo! This stuff they got going on now is just crazy. At least comb your hair. <laughs> These little girls, I can't stand the little girl hair. They call that right now. You got these little kids around here, and y'all walking around here, one of them have hair all down to your dog on butt, and your child looking like what? Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> because of it. <laughs> I like that. I have a problem with that. And I see it all the time. These girls getting all decked out and fly and the children looking like this. They stank. Mm -hmm. Mother no used to tell us when they were stank. She said, y'all used to be stanking back in the days or whatever. She said, wash. See, Mother no they cut corners back then. Bishop didn't either. Get some soap, she said. Get some deodorant. You ain't got none, I ain't got some. The little girls running around here getting all musty. Stop running around behind no boys. You live one of them beats. You hear some. You hear some stuff. And girls, y'all need to keep yourselves up too. I'm talking to the women right now. Keep yourselves up. Me and Sheldon was sitting at the graduation. A little girl walked past us, had on a short dress. Sheldon turned around and said, "Mom." What was that I smell? I said, I don't know, but I smell the same thing too. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to sit on the edge because my knee was hurting. <laughs> and you sit right down the edge, you, you see the smell of everything. So this girl just had graduated. I think she was from Maine. <laughs> she had on this red thing, so I think that was from Maine. 
She had on that. It would take me But she smelled. And that's nothing. It's too hot. It's getting too hot now. It's getting too hot. We don't need it. And, and every home it ain't that big. So I don't need to be that close to nobody to smell enough. Amen? Amen. A virtuous woman teach her kids this. We even teach the boys, don't we, Sister Carl? Amen. Boy, you must be. Get in there and wash. <laughs> don't be out there playing. Don't come hugging me. Go wash. You got to teach your children this. That's our job. That's our job as women. Me and y'all the enforcers, amen? A virtuous woman cares for her body. I just talked about that a little bit. A virtuous woman, oh, let me go back to that. A virtuous woman cares for her body. She prepares healthy food for her family. She takes care of herself and her family. I honestly believe that every woman or mother should know how to cook. Amen. Should know how to cook. Should know how to cook. Y'all hear me when I say should, right? Y'all catching that? Should know how to cook. My grandmother and mother, I don't want to talk about my grandma because my grandmother was really, really special. My grandma was like the person who really raised me and instilled things in me. I love my mama, but I show enough. Show enough, show enough. I love my grandma. So grandmamas, we are very important in these children's lives. Amen? Amen. But my grandmama told me that I need to know how to cook. Mother Norma told me I need to know how to cook. I know how to cook. You know how to cook, Desiree. I know how to cook. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the key. If you like to eat, you got to know how to cook. Amen. Amen. But so many of these young mothers and young women these days don't know how to cook. All they do is throw it in the microwave. Noodles. Throw it in the microwave. Kids got hot pockets. Yeah. All they know, hot pockets and pizza. Noodles. Now they even got the little macaroni and cheese that you can throw in the microwave. Teach them how to get that microwave, they good to go. No, you teaching them how to be lazy. And then they're not getting no healthy food at an early age. I cook for my boys and my husband. I don't do a whole lot of cooking now. Amen. But I cook for them. They saw me cook. My boys experienced my cooking. Experienced me in the kitchen. So both of my boys know how to cook a little bit. Men, you need to know how to cook also. Amen. What's your baby name? Josh, you know how to cook, honey? <laughs> you always have you in the kitchen. You ain't kind of sugar. You need to lunch with me. Jesus, I agree. You need to lunch with me. But you better be careful with that. You better be careful with that because it's going to come a time that he might want some home cooking, home cooking food. You come home. Okay, but. We pray that it don't happen. It's on the show to come along and cook some food for you. You put in a nice, you know, handsome little light skin thing and all that. Let me fix you some spaghetti and meatballs and sack with garlic rolls. Come on over to my door. What you gonna do? I can cook for myself. Okay? So learn to cook. Learn to cook. Men, learn to cook. Learn to cook. So tell you, honey, you good looking, you got you you're smart. Woo! That's the two pluses for you. Yeah, child. Learn to cook. Learn to cook. Because believe me, there's always some little shorty somewhere around, you know, looking at somebody like you. Amen? So we as parents, we gotta know these type of things. Amen. A virtuous woman is a homemaker. People should feel comfortable to come in your home. You should make people feel on the edge to come to your house. If you're a virtuous woman. You should work, you should welcome everybody in. Just about everybody. Some people try to these days. <laughs> Use some spiritual discernment. Amen. But Lady Carter is good for this. She she don't she just stop by. But you it, your home should be inviting. Show good hospitality when somebody comes to your house. So they'll want to come back, but not too much. 
church. Because <laughs> we work every day. Amen. Use some wisdom. But your home should be inviting you. And people should feel good to come to your home or just be around you because of the love that you show. You don't mind helping others because your family is taken care of. I know that we as women are working outside of our homes now, but our first ministry is to our home. Amen. If your house is all jacked up, then you are not pleasing to God. Amen. Focus on your home first, then the church, then God will be pleased. This doesn't mean you don't come to church. All right, say that. Well, me and Jonah want to go out tonight. No, y'all got five other days to go out. Okay? Well, get your house in order. Get your house in order. A virtuous woman uses her time wisely. Uh-oh. This is called, I already had this down now. So I ain't trying to throw no shade. Please don't. I ain't trying to throw no shade now. I already had this down. A virtuous woman uses her time wisely. She is someone that works diligently to complete her tasks daily. She has to prioritize what things are important and what things are not. All of us lie, have busy lives. There is something that might not get accomplished, but a virtuous woman strives to get the most out of her time that has been allotted to her. I'm not going to shame, but this is what I got in my notes. I'm probably speaking to So they're thinking I ain't going to shame. She is not the one who is always late. Stay working on. Yes, Lord. She strives 